tonight we're going to have a little discussion between um, Long Island Audit and Bryant from Here's the Deal. And uh, I'm going to pretty much stay out of this and sit back and let these two discuss what they have started discussing and give them a neutral channel to discuss it all on. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys uh, talk it out. Hey, Sean, I'll let you start. Go ahead. Hey, how you doing, Brian? Hey, hey, Dan. Thanks for having us here. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I would just like to start, um, Brian, and I just want to preface this by just saying, listen, I hope at the end of this uh, discussion that we have that, you know, we're closer for it and that, um, you know, we're closer to achieving the goals we want to achieve in this country. But I would just like to know, just, just to preface everything, what I, I don't know much, unfortunately, I don't know much about your belief system. So in order for me to properly have a discussion with you, I, I think I would need to know exactly where do you stand on, on a certain topic as far as, um, I know you're like, for example, I, I don't know if you want to, you know, get rid of all laws or what is your, what is your like belief on, you know, for example, there are some in the community that say, you know, DUI should be legal or, you know, things of that nature. Is, is that your opinion? Cause that's, that's what I thought it was from what I heard from other people, but I just wanted to get it directly from you. Um, I would just like, there's so many things I could say because it's, it's kind of a general topic, but it specifically hits home to every single individual in America and by extension, everybody in the world, because we're supposed to be that light, the city on the hill, but I would encapsulate it by saying politics. And I say this a lot on my channel. So I hope people aren't, you know, I've said this ad nauseum basically, but politics is the clever and deceptive art of using euphemisms, lies, emotionalism, and fear mongering in order to dupe average people like you and me into accepting and even demanding the chains of our own enslavement. When they give us an opportunity to vote for a candidate, the vote, the, the person you're voting for is owned. He's owned by both teams. Congress is owned. It's been owned for a long time. And how do we know this? Because back prior to 1913, we had a sound money supply that was dependent on uh, you know, gold and silver, which was the constitutional prescription for money. Once we went, once we crossed over into that, we filled base, fulfilled basically a prophecy of Amchal Rothschilds who said, give me control over a nation's money and I care not who made, made its, makes its laws. So, so now we're operating on a credit system based on debt and every note that you have in your pocket is not a dollar. It's a federal reserve uh, fiat currency Ponzi uh, representation of a system, which means that somebody can control the value of our time and labor, labor. So when we talk about law enforcement and when we talk about politicians, we have to know that the underbelly, the, the, the bottom line bedrock root of what's wrong with this problem with this country is we don't have sound money. We have a dishonest fiat currency Ponzi scheme that's dependent on two things. It's the perception of the United States American people, but it it depends on two things. It's the the more the force and might of the military industrial complex and oil because of this, you know, the breaking of the Bretton Woods Agreement and the 1971 Nixon, uh, you know, took us off the gold standard and we went completely on OPEC oil. So that is the fundamental problem with the with the nation, and it because we have that fundamental problem, we absolutely have nothing but corruption in politics. It's it's funny to me that anybody would involve themselves in poli politics because we know that politicians are synonymous with liars, that anybody would have any an, a nanoparticle of confidence in a politician who's saying, oh, I'm going to create laws that's going to create more money for you. More, we're going to put more money in your pocket. It's going to give you more freedom. And then every time, especially on the federal level, when you have a president or you have a, you know the, the state governors, you not only have less freedom, you also have less money in your pocket because the government has wasted more money. And as an offshoot of that, we have police forces that absolutely violate the Constitution every single day. And when I say Constitution, let me be real specific. I'm just talking about those parts in the Constitution, specifically the Bill of Rights, that are in line with freedom, individual freedom. You, you own your body. I own my body is the basic part of it. Nobody has a higher claim over my life and property than you. Nobody has a higher claim over your life and property. Than, I mean, than me or, and vice versa with you. So if anybody tries to cross that line and tell you, you can't put something in your body, or you can't have that firearm to protect yourself, or you can't own that property because we're going to get property taxes. That is a direct violation of human rights. And that on every level, I don't care if you're a cop, uh, you know, claim to be a politician or, or just the regular Joe Schmo in the street. Every one of us needs to resist that 
because that is the fundamental issue we're talking about here. We're talking about tyranny. We're talking about a man oppressing another man in violation of his consent and against his will. So, and, and that's what we're, so let me ask you a question. So that, that's where I'm at. So I'm wait, apolitical. Just, you know, I'll, I'll answer your question. I promise, but okay. I don't okay, think, wait, and, let me, and, I, and I agree with every, and I, I agree with everything that you just said. Well, well, well said. And I agree with everything you just said. I, I would just like the answer to my question was, my, my, my question was, do you believe that all laws such as driving under the influence? Because like I said, I don't know your take on that. For example, like, do you think all laws that don't have a victim should be, are unconstitutional or should not be uh, enforced by law enforcement driving under the influence? For example, that's just an example I'm just giving you because I've had a discussion with another um, activist um, in our community about that. And I just wanted to see from that perspective, Okay, everything you said was well said. And I agree with everything you said. You won't find any disagreement with anything that you just said. I just want to know what, what, how far does your victimless crime um, go as far as getting rid of laws? Well, there's a lot of nuance to it, but basically if there is no victim, there's no crime and the state can right. never be, the state can never be the victim because the state is always the victimizer. They're always stealing. They can, the state can only exist through the extortion of the people that they claim to be protecting and serving. So the state can't be a, a, a victim. Does okay. that answer? Does that answer that, your question? That, that does answer my question. That's, that's okay. and, and you're obviously you're entitled to your opinion on that. Um, <laughs> I would I would think that you know maybe because I'm flawed, maybe I'm not flawed. I, maybe I'm biased on the fact that you know my niece lost her legs to a you know a drunk driver at the age of three years old, and you know I I don't think that you know people should be driving drunk. I'm sure you don't. I, I don't know. I, well, I don't I, either. I know. I know. Oh wait, know. wait. Let me clarify because I think I think I I I uh, wasn't clear enough on something, and I gave you a, a you know preconceived misunderstanding. Um, I'm not against rules. I'm just against rulers. Gotcha. I think I think it's good for society Perfect. to have rules. I think that's good. Gotcha. Now now now. Okay. That that helps me understand. And like I said, I just wanted to to, to preface our conversation with that. Okay. So. Uh, you know, we, we basically have this conversation. You made a video about, about uh, we had a discussion in a, in a live chat on uh, Leroy Truth's channel, and then you made a video about uh, following orders uh, because I had mentioned about Captain Raposo that he's following the, the law that was passed in that area. In, in context, you know, I just wanted to clarify that I wasn't saying that he's okay or he's a good cop for just following <laughs> orders. You know, I, I know a lot of people in in the chat or even you know i get it the thumbnail and stuff like that they might think that and associate with that but that's not what i was saying at all you know i was just saying i'm trying to find when i said that i was trying to find a solution for the problem of tyranny in our country and like you said i'm a big proponent of a second amendment's rights like you said you read his the website of the uh, of the north bergen police department and they they require permits for you know, I, I'm a big, you should, I mean, you, we're not going to disagree on much. I can, I can tell you that right now. The other thing that we probably disagree on is to call to, to, to say that all police officers, law enforcement in our country are Gestapo, right? Because, mm. you know, that's something we don't agree on. And, and, and not, not because, not because there, there aren't Gestapo like police officers in our country. I've, I've met a few of them myself, you know, I, you know, I like to think that when people are watching this, they look at both of our bodies of work. You've done great work in your field. Um, I'd like to think that I've affected some change in mine. And, you know, I, I like to would people to look at both of our uh, words with the context of our work as well in our actions, because I think actions are very important, especially when we're dealing with activism. But the, the reason I take a little issue with, you know, likening all law enforcement in our country to Gestapo is I think that it disrespects the people that lived under the Gestapo because when you when you look at the facts of it when you look at the facts I've I've dealt with Gestapo police officers before in this country they definitely exist but when you look at the facts the, the Gestapo killed 500,000 people a year right law enforcement in our country kills you know estimates between 600 and you know 1200 people a year horrible not one person should die at the hand of law enforcement. Like we all can agree there. Not one. Horrible. Um, but it's just when you when you're when you're just when you're comparing two things and then you look at the facts between them about you know Gestapo killing five hundred thousand, torturing people, hanging them. You know, you know we could talk about you know torturing as far as you know putting people in handcuffs, putting people in cells. Just to be clear, I've been arrested a total of nine times since I've started my activism three years ago. So a total of nine times in three years. Um, and I fought every single one of them in this corrupt court system that we have that I'm sure we can both agree on. And, you know, thankfully I, I've, I've won every single case. But the, the point is, is that 
we could talk about levels of things, but when you're talking about when you're just comparing all law enforcement are like the Gestapo, are the, are the Gestapo, you know, I think that puts, you know, I think that just serves to divide, and it's and it's not accurate. It's not accurate as far as the facts go, and I think that it only serves to divide country because there's, as you know, Brian, there are people out there that are going to lick boots no matter what. They're going to be, they want to be ruled, like you said you know, they want to be ruled. That's what they're looking for. And you're never going to change their mind. They want to be ruled. They think all cops are heroes. You know what? They're, they're, they're indoctrinated to the, to that belief, you know, outside of, I don't know how many police departments you've been to, um, uh, Brian, but every police department that I've seen, you know, they have thank you to our heroes and all this propaganda posted outside of these law enforcement agencies. Like, oh, there are first responders, our heroes, et cetera, et cetera. And the people and, and there are people out there that really get, you know, indoctrinated by this propaganda and say, you know, they are heroes. They, you know, they're just doing their job. They're just, they're heroes. They're, they're, they're out here saving lives every day. And that's what they think. They think in their mind that law enforcement's out there saving lives every day. And, and you and I know different, you know, they're robbing people of their money on the street. They're, you know, they're, they're putting people in, in jail unjustifiably. So, it's it, it, it's a problem. What I'm talking about are the people that are kind of like in the middle, and I've and I've kind of seen, which is why I think the Gestapo saying that all law enforcement. You compared, for example, Captain Raposo to got the Gestapo. You know, Captain Raposo. I happen to know. I happen to know him. He did the First Amendment training, which we were talking about. We were, that's when we had our discussion in the live stream. He did the First Amendment training in another department that he didn't get paid for. He did it on his own time. He didn't know it was going to be recorded. Um, you know, it, it wasn't. It, he he did it because all indicators of, and what he told me indicate that he says that you know he did it just because of you know he wanted to try and spread you know some some knowledge about First Amendment auditors and activists and and respecting people's rights and treating them with respect. So when you compare him to a Gestapo, you know, it's kind of like, you know, how, what purpose does that serve, right? What purpose does comparing all law enforcement, even law enforcement that are actively on their own time and, and you know, not getting paid to do so, not any, no publicity about it because he didn't, yes, there was a camera there, but he had no idea that camera was going to be there. And Leroy Truth can tell you that, you know, how many people could say that, you know, there was a law enforcement officer that went in in Florida. I'm sure you covered it on your channel that, you know, grabbed up her, her supervisor. I forgot the department off the top of my head that he was about to pepper spray uh, a man that was handcuffed in the car. She grabbed him. He choked her. Is she Gestapo? Like, you know, it, she directly went against the thin blue line and grabbed up her supervisor to protect a citizen from his tyrannical behavior. And, you know, I just think that it, it, it really it doesn't serve what, the overall goal is and that's to change the minds of the people right because we can't we can't get any change in this country without changing the minds of the people of the, of the people that have been you know indoctrinated into believing that law enforcement officers are heroes and we both know that's not the case can i can i just jump in real quick go ahead yeah go uh ahead. yeah i i agree we need to change the minds of the people because like you just pointed out there's heavy propaganda there's incessant propaganda it doesn't stop we all are subject to certain levels of propaganda and buying into propaganda which leads us into cognitive dissonance but what what is your understand when i say gestapo what is your understanding of that what what meaning do you take away from that well i i i take it at its face value right so i take it at the face value of when you're comparing all officers in uh, all law enforcement officers in this country to the Gestapo, I'm taking it at face value, meaning that I am looking at what the Gestapo, I, I love history. I'm a big fan of history. Those, my favorite quote is those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat itself or are doomed to repeat it. I think we need to learn from history. And I think that there are some indicators right now in our country that, you know, with, with limiting on firearms and things of that nature, if, 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 if you study history, that's the first thing that that goes takes away the firearms from the people before the the government goes completely tyrannical. But when I take it at face value, so I'm thinking, okay, Gestapo. I know the Gestapo as as somebody who studied you know history in college and in high school. The Gestapo killed millions of people over the course of uh, the better of the better of a decade. I believe twelve years the Holocaust lasted. So the Gestapo killed over six million over six million people. And when you look at the same numbers that law enforcement has done, you know, it's, it's not, it's nowhere close. It's not even in the same realm of, you know, it, it, you can't even compare the two, right? So it's, for me, it's, it's, I'm looking at it in, in that lens and, and I'm trying to understand, I understand what you're trying, I think, again, I don't want to put words in your mouth. This is why I'm having this discussion with you. I want to understand better, but I, I think in my perspective, I think I, what you're trying to do is, is to try and 
say that, listen, these people don't care about you. They're going to enforce the law, which is, you know, in direct violation of your God-given rights and your freedoms. And, and I can understand that to a certain point, but I'm talking about what you disagree, that we need to change the minds of, of Americans in this country. Everybody that's in this chat right now or watching this, everybody that watches this live is going to agree, is going to agree that there are, that this country is full of tyrants and that the system's unjust, but there are people out there and I've received emails. I've received comments that, you know, you know, I used to hate what you guys did. I used to hate, you know, I used to be a, the biggest bootlicker and now I'm not a bootlicker anymore. I've watched some of your videos. I watched others videos. And, you know, now that I fully understand, yeah, cops don't really care about us. They, they're not heroes. They're not, you know, they're not the, the, the heroes that I've always say in my videos, like a hero is a title that's earned. You don't get it just by taking a job and putting on a badge and a gun every single day when you wake up. So could there cop, could, are there cops that could be, that done heroic deeds? Sure. I, I, I don't know any, but I don't know any has done any hero, heroic deeds, but I'm sure they have, you know, save somebody from an exploding car. I don't know. But the point is, is that not all cops are heroes. And I don't think that all, I, um, I know all cops are not Gestapo because just that face value, maybe you're, maybe you're, maybe you're t thinking about it in a different way, but in face, at face value, they're just not just if you compare the facts. And I think that's, it doesn't serve to help change the minds of the people that are in the middle in our country that say, you know what? I like the police. You know what? I like freedom, but in, in, in you know, which way am I going to go here? And, oh, this guy's just calling. Oh, they're just all Gestapo. That's, you know, that's not right. You know, because they're not. Well, can you I, know, let me clear, let me clarify real quick. Go ahead, go ahead, yeah, um, go ahead. Because, because uh, you also pointed out, and I totally agree that there are levels to tyranny. There are degrees to, to which somebody's a tyrant and tyrant takes many faces and many forms and operates on many different degrees and levels. So I know for a fact that not all Gestapo or SS members had a hand in loading people in boxcars. But I also know that in the 1930s Germany, people were forced at bun gunpoint to load onto those rail cars, but maybe a block away, a uh, handful of Gestapo police stopped somebody to inspect their papers. Papers, please. That's Gestapo. In another part of the community, maybe they're ransacking a home so they can confiscate, we conf confiscate weapons. That's Gestapo. So Gestapo type actions belong to people whose behavior aligns with anti-freedom pro tyranny and no matter what level of oppression because we got to ask ourselves as americans because like you said you know we've been propagandized and we we need to uh break through to the minds of people so that they can come on board the freedom train because if we don't 100%. get a bunch of people if we don't get they don't get a bunch of people uh you know if we don't get a bunch of people understanding what liberty it is and being willing to say liberty or death i'm going to go to my grave as long as i got a little semblance of freedom i'm going to resist tyranny but that, that leads us to the question of how much tyranny is acceptable tyranny. When I hear that somebody got stopped and they were made insecure in their person, it incenses me. It may not be as jarring or shocking as a Daniel Shaver dying in the hallway of that La Quinta Inn in Mesa, Arizona at the hands of Philip Brailsford, but it still is tyranny. It still is Gestapo. So when I say all cops are Gestapo because they are a part of the Thin Blue Line gang, I'm talking about they operate on many different levels of tyranny, none of which is acceptable. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about Gestapo. So, for example, let's, let's just go. And I'm fully aware that Captain uh, Raposo may be watching this. And so I would just ask you, Mr. Raposo, to search your own heart. If after Captain Raposo gave a five star dissertation on why we should respect auditors in the First Amendment, he leaves and enforces an anti Second Amendment gun law and treats somebody as a felon and puts him in a cage after he gave that, you know, stellar performance. Um, that's Gestapo. I don't care what your words are. If your department, if your gang, if your corrupt organization has said that, hey, if we catch any uh, inhabitants of New Jersey with a firearm to dare protect themselves, or they're walking around with a concealed weapon without, a, without our permission, we're going to lock them up. That's Gestapo. And I don't care what your good words come out of Captain Raposo's mouth. So let's, let's, let's talk about that then. Let's talk about, you know, the second <laughs> amendment and, and permits and things of that nature. So what, what are your, what are your beliefs on the second amendment? Can any, can, a, you know, for example, can a 13 year old have a gun is entitled to a gun or, you know, is a, what, what is your, what is, is there, are there any rules or limits on the second amendment in your mind? Or is it just, you know, I, anybody I, could have, a, or is there like mental health? Like if somebody's schizophrenic, you, you see like all these horrible things that are happening, you know, 
I, and and, and the, the, the the mainstream media always want to propagate, you know, use it as propaganda and anti-gun movement, and then the 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 left of our cor- both corrupt sides want to use it as you know, let's let, let's take away our more rights, more Second Amendment rights, you know. But what are your thoughts? I'm I'm curious here. What are your thoughts on? Are there should be any limits on Second Amendment as far as age restrictions, mental health, or anything of that nature? I personally don't want bad guy, bad guys or children with guns, but I don't want the bad guys of government limiting anybody's ability to have a gun. I, I, I don't know about you, but there's 27 words in the constitution and it's found in the bill of rights and it's found in the second amendment. Four of those words are very, very clear shall not be infringed. It is not the government's job and it is not the scope of their responsibility to limit firearms or personal protection devices. I like to call them from anybody. It's not their job. And if that means that we have five-year-olds walking around with guns or or felons who just got out of a a super max prison with guns, I would rather have dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery because dangerous freedom is far more safe than tyranny that comes at the hands of giving up our shall not be infringed rights. So as ridiculous as it may sound, I like to stay within the realm of reality, though. There should not be a single gun law. Any gun law violates the Second Amendment because it says shall not be infringed. And if there's a gun law that says you need a seven day wait, you need a background check, you can't have this gun, you can't have an AR-15, no high capacity magazines. Every one of those on one shade or another is an infringement. And I am just for shall not be infringed. Right. And and listen, and I I will go on the record and agree with you. And I I do I do also agree with you that five year olds shouldn't have guns, and and we need to and that you know horrible mentally ill people that are going to do that are going to take away people's children should not have guns. When when you say that you know, and I agree that you know our corrupt system shouldn't be making these kinds of laws and determinations. You know, I, it, for me it sounds like you know then what then how do we make you know, I agree that uh, with a lot of what you're saying, but then, you know, what's the solution here? How do well, we keep? Well, well, first of all, do you agree? Do you agree that an anti-gun law is a Gestapo law? Well, listen, when I agree, when I, when I think of the, the, the Gestapo, I think of the Gestapo as, you know, just violating rights. Let me, let me I ask you most this. People, I think most people think of when they think of the Gestapo as people who've helped you know have tortured people in interrogations room hanging them upside down you know how about show I, me your paper I, I, how about how about papers please show me your papers right that i guess they, they they they're akin to they're they're, they're known for that as well as t- checking people's papers and i have gone across the country and fought and refused id in almost every single state in our great country here but you know and why I, and why have you done why have you done that because you hate tyranny and you love freedom right Right. Exactly. So so anybody who comes against your freedom and tries to violate your right to be secure in your person has committed that, which is what, which is exactly what the Gestapo did. And I've called, and I've, they're a tyrant and I've called them as such to their face. And many, so what's the, isn't tyrant, it's, it's, it's the difference, Brian, the difference, the difference, Brian, is that a tyrant is, is a tyrant. Gestapo's were tyrants, right? So, you know, you have different, you know, as you said, we have levels of tyranny. None should exist in any free country. Correct. In any free society um we can agree on that but w- when you say gestapo it's what i and i alluded and i said earlier what is that is going to not we're trying to change the minds of people every because that's the only way we could ever change anything we're trying to change the mind of the masses in the united states that's the only mm-hmm. way because as as a lover of history the only way real revolution comes about and and i'm sure you can agree with this uh, you know, the only way real revolution or change, like revolutionary change comes about is when a country is in peril, right? They're in dire straits. And in, in every revolution, it's because the people didn't have food, they didn't they didn't have access to food, they didn't have access to certain things in order to survive, right? Once you take away people's, people's survival instincts kick in, you know, you can make a law about a gun and people aren't really gonna do anything as we've seen in our country, right? You know, you can make a law about, you know, a lot of different things that ID yourself, right? Stop an ID states and not people, people aren't going to revolt. And that's just the facts of life. And history has shown us that people will revolt when they lose their basic need of survival. And that's just, that's just plain old history. It's happened in every single, well, the, you know, well, the declaration of independence says they won't even revolt. Then they will actually suffer the cruelest punishments quote, while those cruel punishments are sufferable. I mean, I, I think, I think what we have here is a psyop. Okay. So, Let's let's move away from Gestapo, okay? So obviously that word, just like the word anarchy. No, no. Again, I just I think for me, for me, it's more about 
changing the minds of the people. And when when you're trying to when 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 that word is used, the Gestapo, like I said, I, I agree there are Gestapo police here. Right. I call them tyrants. You know, they're words. And but words are important. And I think that, the you know, I, I call them you're a tyrant. If somebody asked me for my for my papers. I say you're a tyrant. Right. Well, what if That's, somebody says what if somebody says, Sean, tyrant? That's just aren't you going overboard? Don't we need to change the minds of the masses? You know, it's, so there's always going to be nitpicking on terms. But I see Gestapo and tyrant is synonymous. I'm willing to drop the term Gestapo and just go with tyrant or oppressor, just a government oppressor. Yeah, because agree. any n- no level, no level. I think you'll agree with this. I like I, like you said at the beginning of this conversation, I think we agree agree with each other more than we disagree. I am very concerned on what we disagree with. That's why that's why I want to have this conversation. So if there is tyranny, which every anti any infringement un- unless you don't believe shall not be do you what do you think about the second amendment? Do you do you, do you believe shall not be infringed I, means what it I, says? No, I I I 100 I already I already stated that I agree with you okay. that, you know, okay. there, I just there want are to be... questions. There are questions like you said, you don't think five year olds or people that are mentally ill should be carrying weapons as well. But, you know, that we don't we didn't really you didn't touch on a solution. And I and I can't think of a solution on how do we keep those guns out of those people's hands. But the salute, I did. On. Yeah, the solution is freedom. The solution is freedom, even if it means it's going to be dangerous. It cannot possibly be any more dangerous than uh, precinct 70, uh, the 75th precinct arresting you while you have the law in their hands saying this is not a, not only not an arrestable offense but you swore to uphold this and they arrest you anyway right having right having let five-year-olds with guns and felons with guns if you let everybody else have guns then those felons will be kept in check because you're not going to have people breaking the houses if 86 year old aunt sadie is strapped you know what i mean i agree i agree so, we're not so, we don't disagree there I and agree. it's not and, and, and it's not going to be perfect, but the solution is always going to be air on the side of freedom, never on tyranny. So if tyr- right. if no level of tyranny is acceptable and show me your papers is tyranny and uh, confiscating weapons is tyranny and no knock raids is tyranny and arresting Sean Paul Reyes in 75th precinct when he shouldn't have been arrested is tyranny, then no level of tyranny should be uh, accepted. And if there's an area where there's uh, gun laws that are in, uh, infringement. I just call them infringement laws because that's what they are. They are they are anti-gun, anti-freedom infringement laws. If if anybody is a part of an organization that says, yeah, we're going to take your weapons and we're going to throw you into jail and you're going to get a felony record and we're going to ruin your life because you got something that the Second Amendment, you know, said, hey, that's a natural right. Uh, that's tyranny. So anybody who's a part of that organization is a tyrant because. They're a part of an organization that literally is saying, I will uphold the law to confiscate weapons and jail innocent people who've committed no crime. I got a problem with that. Right. I think I think most people, the problem, Brian, is we both have a problem with that. The problem is, is that the majority of our country does not have a problem with that. But how But how are we helping the masses by telling them that Captain Raposo is not a tyrant? Just because he speaks no, no, to you no, words not, about that, and and I've never said I, I never said that he wasn't oh, a tyrant. I never did, said that. I said I said he wasn't. I said it's I, my exact words. Is it's disingenuous to call people to call all law enforcement to Gestapo mm-hmm. only only in the context, Brian, of trying to change the minds of the people. So right? you're We're saying it's not a so you're, not, so you're saying it's not an untrue statement, but we need to change our language so that we can be perceived uh, with higher favor and high regard. Well, no, from the I, 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 think that the, I think the Gestapo, I think the Gestapo, like I said, they did, you know, if you're looking at the facts, you know, 6 million people killed in a decade, you know, uh, torturing people, hanging them upside down in interrogations rooms, you know, branding them with, with cattle irons, you know, those kinds of things, as, as much as egregious things that are happening in the United States, you know, hanging people upside down, in an interrogation room, branding them, electrocuting them, the, uh, you know, those things aren't happening to my knowledge, at least. Um, uh, but the, I, I don't think those things are happening in our country. So when you talk about, if you want to talk about, if you want to compare all law enforcement to Gestapo, you know, and you want to just relate it to, oh, well, Gestapo has <laughs> papers, right? You know, but you didn't, you know, that's not, that's all not right, really then, what the Gestapo is really about. All right. right then then, torturing then let, killing then people. let's, then let's talk about that. Let's talk about a, a damp wall dungeon where the Gestapo have surrounded one guy and they're flaying his skin. Okay. They're not doing that, but what do you think Tyree Nichols would say about the Memphis jump out crew? Would you say, would you say while he's getting curb stomped by the Memphis, the five Memphis police officers who brutally ended his life, would you say that Tyree Nichols saw a difference between the Memphis jump, jump out crew and the, the, okay. So 
we, of course he didn't. So but, Gestapo, but, but, but when, you, when, you, when you want to bring up specific instances like Tyree Nichols or you know um, any of the uh, any other scenario, James where Boyd, Daniel wanted, Shaver, Karen right, Garner, Eric right. Garner. Yeah. If you want to if you want to bring up those specific incidents, then we can agree. Yes, they acted like the Gestapo, right? But uh, when when you use the words all law enforcement are Gestapo, I don't think that that helps serve. I don't, I don't think it's true. Just based on the facts, I don't. Did the Gestapo sure. ask for? Did the Gestapo ask for papers and for ID? Right, for no you're reason. taking one aspect of the Gestapo as far but you as took, you know. But you took one, one aspect. aspect of the Gestapo. I'm taking yeah, multiple: see, torture, murder. Um, you know. Well, I just yeah. yeah well, based, okay. The murder based on somebody's ethnicity and their cultural background, like that. And I'm, that, that does, like I said, no one's saying that does not happen in the United States. I've seen it. I've covered it. You've covered it. You know, I've dealt with it personally. I, again, I don't know your personal thing, but you know. I've dealt with it personally. I've been arrested because of how I looked. I've been arrested because of, you know, because they don't, they hate freedom. I, I've spent nights in jail because of that. You know, it's, I, I agree those, I would compare those particular officers to Gestapo and I would have no problem calling them that. So, so you don't see the words tyrant and Gestapo as synonymous? No, because I don't think that, I, I think that a, a tyrant can be any other, like a tyrant could be, a, a, could be fall under any, you know, a tyrant, uh, Gestapo's were tyrants. So I think tyrant, I think Gestapo, when you when you look at the facts, again, I'm just looking at the facts of what Gestapo were, what they were and what they did. But you know, were, did all Gestapo flay people's skin and, and behead people? I'm sure, I'm sure the majority of them f flayed people's skin and... and I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you, Brian, if all of them did, but I I've never seen, I've, ne I've never seen a record of that, but the Gestapo were primarily known for going door to door and, and making sure the well, proper no, they were primarily, people were in that house. Yeah, they, they, they primarily put people on, you know, transport to be, to be killed, right? Well, no, that's, that's not primarily what the Gestapo did. The primary, the Gestapo were the, the German police under Hitler that did various things, just like, just like the thin blue line gang does various right. things. And, and I've I've called and, the thing, I've called when when I think an officer when I think I've called the Thin Blue Line gang. I've, there's not something that I haven't. I'm very well aware. I'm just all I'm saying, Brian. My only thing is is that I, I we need to change the minds of the people. There's people the people in the comment section right now that are watching this video. Yes, they're gonna yes all law enforcement are Gestapo. Okay, now what? Right? Okay, now let me what? let me can can I clarify something? Do, are you of the you, have you ever heard people say a cab a c a b all cops are bad? Right. Yes, of course. Do you, right. do you, do you believe that? I've seen instances where they're not. So I think the system is bad. I, I think the overall system, as you alluded to in your you know intro here to our discussion, I think that it's systematically designed for tyranny from the president all the way down to, you know, local law enforcement, to your local co councilman, to the, our currency, you know, the currency is a huge thing that's, you know, people think that, you know, our, our money, oh, we have to pay back our, our our debt. You know, no one knows that the debt, you know, you are not paying back any debt. That's just, it's all, it's all like just smoke and mirrors. But, you know, I've, I've seen officers that have done things that would not make them bad. I don't know. Again, I don't know any, I don't know what they do on their nine to five, but I've seen officers who have gone against other officers. I've seen that happen. Not much. But I've seen it happen, right? So I, I've seen it with my own eyes happen where a law enforcement officer will pull another law enforcement officer off, you know, and it's, they should have went to the next step and arrested that person, but they didn't. So, you know, at the end of the day, there nothing's that no one's ever perfect. No one's ever going to be perfect. But when you talk about, you know, I, I, I you know, and I'm always going to get heat for this and I, and I get it. It is what it is. I'm going to, I'm going to receive heat for it. And, you know, if I, if, if it really affected me, what like the comment section says, you know, I'd, I'd stop doing this a long time ago. Or I'd block a million people. I don't block anybody on my channel. So I, I, I love everybody's opinions. I hope everybody respects mine. Like I respect yours and I respect Brian's. But when, when we talk about, you know, all cops are bad and you know, oh, they're, they should quit. Right. A good, what is a good cop? He's not, is unemployed. He doesn't have a job anymore. And you know, you thought, oh, you know, I, I believe another activist, I, you know, I forgot who it was said that, oh, you know, if they wrote a ticket in their life, they're a bad cop, right? Because they're enforcing victimless crimes. If they arrested somebody for committing a DUI, they're a bad cop and they're a tyrant because they arrested somebody for a victimless crime. Um, my only thing is, is that why that you want them to, you want them to support, I, I feel like, especially people in this community could be a little bit hypocritical, hypocritical at times because you want law enforcement to not give somebody a ticket and risk their livelihood, their 401k, their pension, their families, their two children at home, 
you know, their wives and everything. But as, as activists, there are certain videos that you won't cover, Brian. There are certain videos that, you know, other activists, including myself, won't cover. There are certain topics that we won't talk about on YouTube because you would your channel would be terminated. So, well, it, that doesn't mean it, you don't. No, no, no. It doesn't mean you don't talk about them. You can put it. You can still talk about it, and you can do it in a crafty way. But you don't. You don't ever uh, stop the message. You know. You, well, you're restricting your own. You're restricting your own speech, and 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 not. You know, you you won't show certain videos. Well, no, because... you're not restricting. You're actually when you're censoring something, you're putting like a censor blur over it, and then you're putting a link here. If you want it, go to BitChute or whatever. You're actually getting the information out. You haven't ceased putting out the information. You've come up with a cunning and wise way to put it out. Whereas a law and and you're not ruining anybody's life in the process. When a law enforcement officer gives a traffic ticket, which by the way, I don't know what anybody thinks about this, but if you think about it, traffic law trumps constitutional law in the minds of every single law enforcement officer, specifically state troopers, because you lose 100% of your rights while you were detained for a traffic violation, whether it's five miles and over the speed limit, uh, not, not a properly illuminated license tag, and on and on and on. So you've lost right. your rights. So more trivial of traffic laws. I agree. Well, it's trivial unless it leads to a fishing expedition that leads you being pulled out of the car, possibly tased, handcuffed, and have a felony record on you. But, right. No, but, no, but, no, I'm saying I'm saying this not I'm not saying the, the encounter is trivial, Brian. I'm saying that the those the reasons for the for the encounter are trivial, like the broken taillight or well, you know, going five miles over the speed limit. But well, for example, if you were going a hundred miles down a school zone, people don't want to, you know, again, like you said earlier, you said there has to be rules, but, but how, right? How do we, how do we enforce somebody? How do we stop somebody from going a hundred miles an hour down and, and somebody loses the life of their child? If your child or my child is walking across that street and somebody's going hundred miles an hour, cause there's no speed limits, there's no speed limits. There's no consequences for speeding and they hit the, and they hit, hit our child. Or yeah, well, we can, we can, we can talk about that, but I, I, I'd rather clear the room of the smoke right now and deal with what you just said about this guy is trying to put food. This trooper is trying to put food on his table by literally economically terrorizing this lady who could be one paycheck away from being homeless to, and you compare that to a YouTuber who's actually putting out the information the vital information and he does it in a, in a uh, crafty and wise way, but he's still getting out the information. There's no corollary in that. Number one. And number well, two, I can prove that all cops are bad. Do you want me to prove that all cops are bad? And I'm talking about all sheriffs, all police departments, 100% of the time, there is not one good cop. And you say, you, you say, and I agree, we need to change people's minds, but the only way we can change people's minds is, is give them the pill of the undiluted truth. We can make it more palatable. Like when I deworm my dog, he hates the pill, so I wrap it in bologna or I wrap it in peanut butter and stick it down their throat. But you can't dilute the pill of the truth. As soon as you do, it ceases to be truth. Truth when, is extreme. And to make it, bacon, and to, wait, wait, wait a second. Hold on a second. I, I don't. I'm, yeah. What? What? When you're wrapping it in bacon or putting it, putting it in peanut butter, that's diluting it. No, no, no. When you, when I put a blur effect on my my screen and say, here's a link to the actual video if you want to see this guy's head spill open or whatever. I've only made it more palatable so that more people can see it, but I haven't changed the essence of the truth changing the essence of the truth to me means don't call Gestapo Gestapo when they're acting like Gestapo and they work for a Gestapo organization. Let me give you, I'm going to give you right now written proof that all sheriffs and all police captains and all police departments and all police officials are bad. This right here is a letter. I don't know if you can, oh shoot, you can't see that because of the effect I got. Ah, crap. Here, let me share my screen. Let me share my screen. Well, just take here. I'll, I'll put a link. I'll put a link. Uh, I'll give Dan a link so he can put it under what I have in my hand right here is a letter from the head of the National Sheriff's Department. I'm going to read you what he says. He says this uh, this represents the on behalf of the nation's three thousand eighty six sheriffs. The National Sheriff's Association therefore asks you, Dan Crenshaw, to vote against H.R. 1525. You know what H.R. 1525 is? No, I do not. It's a bill that the Texas um, commissioners or whatever put in play to minimize the damaging effects of civil asset forfeiture. Civil asset forfeiture, if you were to, get, to give the masses the pill of the truth and tell them exactly what it is, it's legalized armed robbery at the hands of the thin blue line cult. So this guy, Jim Skinner, who is the National Sheriff's Association head speaking for every sheriff in the nation. Every sheriff in the nation is saying, no, Dan Crenshaw, we need to keep legalized armed robbery. 
We need to be able to take people's life savings in the name of the war on drugs, which it rarely is. So right. well, one you, you just said that that person was, you read the letter and I just wanted to clarify he was representing 3,000. I forgot the exact number, 3,086. There's only 3,144 sure counties and not all counties uh, counties have sheriffs. It's, right, it's and, then, and not all every... law enforcement are sheriffs, right? No, 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 I'm just talking about the sheriffs. I'm just talking okay, about okay, the sheriffs. Okay. Right I now. thought you were talking yeah, about yeah. all law enforcement. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to prove all law enforcement. Clar- right. Yeah, I just okay. want to clarify something Thank about you. civil af- civil, civil okay. asset forfeiture. 100% so if- agree. I I'm currently investigating. I went to the pol- there is a corrupt police chief a county over from me who has taken 40 million dollars in the last few years from businesses, from people, 40 million dollars. I knocked on his door myself to ask him questions about it. I've FOIA requested. I'm in court. I've been arrested. He came. He sent goons, Gestapo, right? I'll use the Gestapo here. Uh, they've, he's used, he sent goons to my house. in Ode. So I, I have been in this situation with the civil asset forfeiture, and they're trying hard. I, I honestly thought that they were trying to kill me. If I didn't make it home that night, they would have they would have killed me. You know, in, in this specific scenario, I totally agree. You know, broadly, I agree with civil asset forfeiture is, is ro- armed robbery. And yeah. that's and, and a lot of people don't talk about that, Brian, right? A lot of people, you know, not a lot of people are talking about c- civil asset forfeiture. So I'm glad you brought that up. You know, it's a, it's, it's a huge topic, millions and millions of dollars. This one county, one county, 40 million, this one man, he became police commissioner, Patrick Psycho Ryder. His name is Psych. He was nicknamed Psycho by his own men. <laughs> oh, Patrick Psycho Ryder seized over $40 million. And right now I'm investigating that, trying to get to the bottom of it. And it's put my life and my family's life in danger. And these are the things that we need to talk about. I agree with you 100%. And these are tyrants 100%. I agree. I just wanted to make sure that we were in agreement there. Okay. Yeah, we're in agreement. So that that gets all the sheriffs out of the way because not one sheriff, and I'm going to start reaching out to sheriffs and maybe everybody else can in their counties, but bring them this. And I'll, like I said, I'll give Dan the link so you guys can actually print this off. It's only three pages and it's pretty damning against the sheriff's department, how they're begging uh, Dan Crenshaw to make sure that HR 1525 dies in committee. But the second thing I want to go over is the biggest- and Dan police- Crenshaw is what part of the Republican party, right? I just want to make sure- <laughs> he's just I, I i call him dan red flag law i patch mccain crenshaw he's he hates the he hates the constitution <laughs> that's that's a very unique name okay that's but nice uh the, the second so thing i want to get i just want to i only say that if he's republican only because of, of, when we talk about indoctrination indoctrination in this country you know as you know we're separated by you know right or left right that's how people you, that's how most people view their life. They're supporting Donald Trump, but then, yep. oh, Donald Trump's fighting for our freedoms, but they don't really pay. It. They just ignore the fact that he wants to indemnify right. all law enforcement. Amen. You know, and I'm sure there's people that out there that, you know, I'm sure, because as you know, probably a lot of our viewers are support Donald Trump. But at the end of the day, what's wrong is wrong. You got to speak. The truth is the truth. When the man wants to indemnify his, he said it himself, indemnify, meaning that he wants all law enforcement officers to be um immune from any sort of consequences for their actions that extra, that is extra that is, yeah that is extra immune extra right. immune they're already qualified <laughs> and they already have qualified immunity now he wants to give them total and complete immunity federal so immunity, when you go yeah. you know yeah he wants to give them complete and total federal immunity and he said he would do as much and that that is if you if you're listening and you're, you're or you're watching this you know, that is the beginning of, of true, true tyranny. If that was allowed to happen. So it was well, for anybody who... all sorts of consequences away. And again, I'm not excusing the, listen, I'm not excusing again. I think that Democrat Republican, I think that's all used to just divide the country, right? Yeah, it's, it is. It's, it's, it's all a game. It's all a game of smoke and mirrors. Like, Oh, I support Joe Biden. I support Donald yeah. Trump. No one, yeah. Joe Biden doesn't care about you. Donald Trump doesn't care about you. None of the politicians on the left care about you. None of them on the right care about you. They're there to make money. Why do you think they become millionaires in Congress? If they cared about the people, they'd be doing things. They wouldn't become millionaires. They're doing it for profit and and the power and the and the illusion of power that they have. Yeah, no, I agree with everything you said about Donald Trump. And anybody, anybody in the audience who's for Donald Trump or Joe Biden, you've got to take the smelling salts of reality. Let me just give you three things about Donald Trump. I don't know, Mike. I like take the guns first, due process second. So he wants to take away guns. He initiated the red flag laws. He calls himself the father of the VA double X. I'm not going to say the V word here because this is Dan's channel and I don't want to ruin anything. But and then, like you said, federal 
bl blanket federal immunity for all law enforcement officers, rah, rah, thin blue line. Okay, so we've established that all sheriffs buy on to Sheriff Jim, Jim Skinner's National Sheriff's Association civil asset forfeiture nonsense. Now, the biggest police force on the planet, not just in America, on the planet is in your neck of the woods, Sean. It's the New York City Police Department. Back in the 1970s, they conducted the NAP Commission to investigate widespread uh out of control corruption in the New York City Police Department. And then in 1994, they commissioned the Mullen Commission, which is called the City of New York Commission to investigate allegations of police corruption. And I'm just going, I don't want to, I'm not going to bore anybody, but I will read the last four sentences of the final conclusion. Quote, today's corruption, and that's in the New York City Police Department in 1994, is not the corruption of the NAP Commission days from the 1970s. Corruption then was largely a corruption of accommodation of criminals and police officers giving and taking bribes, buying and selling protections, and that would be bad enough. Corruption was, in its essence, consensual. Today's corruption is characterized by, by brutality, theft, abuse of authority, and active police criminality. That was happening 30 years ago, and it hasn't gotten any better. As you can see, you went to jail holding holding the freaking law that they were supposed to abide by in your hand. That one, I, I, I reviewed your video today, Sean, and one of those cops grabbed it and looked at it and still put his hands on you and threw you into a cage anyway. Right. And, and right now, actually, tomorrow I have, you know, just a quick update. We're, we're talking about that tomorrow. I have oral arguments in the Second Circuit. You know, I agree. We can both agree the system is broken. The system of, of itself is broken. My whole point in 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 our in our discussion in the comment section was that there's got to be another way, and other than just you know calling you know all cops Gestapo, right? I mean, but it, I but totally, it, but what if it's true? But what if it's it, true? It, it, okay. If it's if it's true, it's true. Again, it's not true that they killed millions of people. It's not true that there there are certain aspects of it that aren't true. Let's just and and those and 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 I think it would what it does is it hypes up everybody that says okay yeah all cops are just got a uh, Gestapo all cops you know you know f the police I'm gonna you know curtail my language for Dan Channel as well but f the police you know abolish the police and all these different things that's fine. But again, I think that doesn't serve for the grand purpose of what we're trying to accomplish, which we both agree is freedom. When you talk, when you have one side talking about abolish the police and you have the other side saying what's well, back to blue and it's deep throating the whole boot, right? So you have two sides in our country, our country split. You and I, Brian, and, and probably most of the people in this chat, we're part of, despite all the views that we've gotten, we are the minority, the minority, minority, minority in this country. Every, there's one side that says, you know, abolish all police officers. We don't need police. And, we, you know, and there's other, there's another side that says, you know, oh, you know, let's 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 support the police. Let's make them immune from everything. And there are heroes. And I think that we just need to. And I'm not trying to. I, I, I agree with you with a lot that you say, Brian, I really do. And I've told you that in the comment section. I told you that um, in, in the comments of your video. And that's why I want to have this discussion with you, because I, I think I just don't think that it's it's my personal opinion that comparing to cops, to all cops to Gestapo is is going to serve a, a benefit in any way. It's not going to wake anybody up. It's not going to do any of that. It's not going to do any of that. It's going to just fuel the fire for the people who already, you know, who who know that to be true. If that if they know that to be true, if they're if they're talking about, you know, presenting ID and things of that nature. But or, you know, if it, it, but it's going to people, people are going to say, well, they, they're not killing millions of people, right? They're not hanging people upside well, down. They're not branching what, what, people with firearms. Or with, what, do you, um, what do you propose we call all the sheriffs who want civil asset forfeiture? And what do we, what do you propose we call corrupt, uh, and ty ty corrupt tyrants, corrupt tyrants? I think that corruption, again, I think words matter. I think our, you know, we have freedom of speech in this country. And I believe everybody, I don't, I never knock anyone. And I've said, and I've taken heat for this too. And again, it is what it is. You know, you, you're never going to be perfect. You had mentioned that some of, you know, you had made a video like, is this a cult or whatever? I would, I would argue that some of other channels, uh, are more of a cult like than mine. Uh, people that, you know, are like, sound like infomercials, just pitching products to people all day long. But you know, it, it, it's, it's not about, and I've taken heat for this where I say, you know, you know, you're right to curse the police, you know, tell them the F off, mm -hmm. give the middle finger to every cop in the world. Do that. I support it. I fight for that every single day not that specifically because i don't do it myself but i just think that it doesn't serve as it's not productive how effective is it 
I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I question its effectiveness. That's, right, right. That's yeah. No, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying you're saying how, if, how effective is that? You know, right. because and I'm trying to know, get results, right? Like I just beat the NY, I, like well, right now I'm going to court and I beat, and I took the NY, I got arrested, spent 12 hours in, in NYPD lockup, one of the dirtiest places I've ever been, lost my freedom, had to be around, you know, the worst of the worst people. And I'm talking about the cops, you know, antagonizing me, you know, just, uh, it just I, I don't like to complain. I don't even really talk about this, but it's obviously you everybody can imagine what it's like having your freedom taken away from you. Yeah. And if you and if you can't imagine it, just imagine the worst. There is nothing worse on the face of this earth than people taking your freedom from you. Tyrants and corrupt tyrants taking your freedom from you. Nothing worse. There's nothing worse. When you lose your freedom to just move, just to like, yo, I can't get out of this cage that I'm in. That is literally the worst thing that happened to you. It's happened to me nine times since I've started and I've taken it to court every time, not one criminal conviction, in any of those cases. But it, it, the point is, is that I, I try and take it to the court. It's the, I try and do whatever I can. Took it to federal court. They, I won in federal court. They granted my injunction about the law and they appealed it. Right. So now we're going to the second circuit and I doubt it's going to go to the Supreme court, but we're in the second circuit right now. And I got to go do oral arguments tomorrow in the federal court. Okay. I hey, I, hey, I, I, I want you to know, I agree with something you just said, because, Go ahead. you know, I'm willing to, I'm willing to drop the terminology that might, might cause a stumbling block. And I think we should probably do, all do a little bit of introspection and uh, take to heart what you just said, because I really do believe that, you know, you can, I, I use this analogy a lot, and, but I, I, I mean, I'm simplicking. Okay. So I got to stay with what works <laughs> No, but, but, um, Oh, you're very I, I can, I can remove a fly from the forehead of my friend by swatting it away with a piece of paper, you know, getting, getting rid of the wasp or the hornet or whatever is jeopardizing my friend. I can do it with a piece of paper and not leave lasting damage on my friend's forehead, or I can use a hammer. I'll remove the wasp, but my, my friend might die. So I agree with Unfor our unfortunate reality is that perception is everything. And most people are lemmings who have other people do their thinking for them. So if they see right. some, some dude like me calling, uh, my local police department, you're just nothing right. but the Nazi Gestapo. I can see how that would turn somebody off. Whereas if I use different terminology without compromising on the truth, then I could bring more people into our group, which is what we need. So right. and I, not only that, you made a great analogy right there, because not only that you have some, for example, again, Anybody that fights for freedom, you're all right in my book. When when I think you're trying to, you know, scam or manipulate people and use your platform for your own personal gain, and that was that's your only motive. Uh, because obviously, just like anything, we all make money, we you know, we all have bills to pay and we all have to make a living here. But I think your analogy works out perfectly for and it, it reminded me of something is that you know, when you have activists that are at a, at a traffic stop, right? We can agree, Brian, shouldn't happen. But when you're at a traffic stop and the officer tells you stay in the car and you get out of the car, right? And this activist gets out of the car and they start provoking the police and saying, you know, using their extra, using their first amendment right to curse at the police and saying all these things. We are role models to people, right? We, we have a following of hundreds of thousands of people, right? You, your channel is huge. My channel between both of us, we're almost at a million, right? Close to a million people that are subscribed to our channels. And that's not counting every other activist. So tens of millions of people that are, that are watching all of us at all times. Now you conduct yourself in that way. They're going to think that they're going, we have the cover of having a large platform, right? We have you know, we have the, we have, we could, we can post a video and people will start calling and maybe the charges will get dropped. Probably not, but you know, we make some money on YouTube so we can hire lawyers. And when you're engaging in that kind of behavior, constitutional, you're right. All of that. Now the next person, my main goal is to keep people from being harmed and from their freedom being taken from them. That is my 100% end all goal is to as less. So I, I to get as less people. <clears throat> arrested and their freedom or getting killed as possible by tyrant law enforcement so if you're doing that and then the next person they get out of their car and they say you know what fuck you you can't i'm a grown man you know i could stay in my i don't have to get out of the car don't tell me what to do and now the next person goes out and does that and they get shot you know is that what did that what did you by you doing that it, it took it, it it only served to help uh, you know these tyrants kill a man mm -hmm. and get away with it like they always do 
there's not going to be any consequences for these people. So, you know, there rarely ever is. And, and that's the sad part. That's why I always talk about accountability. Cause if, you know, they always want to say, oh, you know, we, a prison and, and, and being arrested, that's a deterrent to stop you from doing, there's no deterrent for law enforcement. That's why they continue to do what they do is because, yeah, I'm taking them to federal court. Yeah. I got the rule changed. Yeah. We're going to second circuit, but the cops that did it, that acted like the thugs that they are and threw me out of the precinct, there's no consequences for them. As hard as I try for there to be, there's none. I've, I've been, I had my ankle sprained by Louisiana cops. I went to every law enforcement agency in that state, documented the whole process, went to everyone. Hey, listen, I have video of these officers throw me downstairs and I was physically injured. I want you to charge them. Wouldn't happen. Wouldn't happen. So my main thing is to protect people's, to protect people's bodies, their, 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 their lives and to protect people's freedoms is to not just not engage in that sort of behavior because it's, even though it's constitutionally protected and you have the right to do it, it, it you want to get home at the end of the day to your children. You want to get home to your, to your family at the end of the day. Yeah. There's a time for everything in a season for every activity under the sun and everything that you and I are saying has nuance. What might work for you might not work for me. You know, somebody may have a better command over the English language and they can, you know, they can talk to that cop in that way. But right. if I try that, I'm going to get my head slammed against the curb. So I get, right. I totally get that. And, and I want to be clear these people, the people who cuss at cops, you know, more power to you go for it. But, you know, I think that we need to take into consideration that people do emulate that kind of stuff, whether you want to believe it or not. And it might not go so well for them as it went for you. So I get that. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm, you know, I, I, I think that that's, it's important for people to, you know, people are going to watch this and I think it's important for them to know that, listen, you know, you have the right, I support that right. Brian supports that right. You want to call them fucking pigs. You want to do this and that fine. But your, is your, your life is more important to your family. Your life is more important to me because nothing's going to happen. You're not, you're, it's not changing anything. It's not, it's not yeah. going to change anything. And, and there's a major caveat to that because you can, you can comply and do everything the cop said, and it still can end with your life extinguished. Dan, of Daniel Shaver is a perfect example of that. This poor guy was scared to death. Philip Brailsford and those guys were giving him rapid fire commands. He adjusted his shorts and boom, he's gone. On the other hand, somebody can, you know, cuss out a cop and we know how fragile the egos of cops are. So it's probably not a wise thing to dance damage the ego of somebody who orders, who's already tripping over their own power. And by the way, he's got a gun and he's willing to use it. So you got to, you got to really pick your battles wisely in this kind of stuff. Let me take, let me take one more uh, second to say something, Sean, because I am, I am so saddened every day when I think about the, the vitriol in the comment section. I hate Sean. I hate Brian. I like Brian more than Sean or just any of the other uh, auditors out there. Look, we all have our own gifts. We have our own specialties. We have our own way of going at it. Now, if one of us steps across the line and goes against freedom and, and goes on the side of tyranny, then we, des we deserve to get called out, you know, do it, you know. Use your discretion how you do that. But I think it would really behoove us to, you know, it as long as the the act that the auditor engaged in wasn't unconstitutional and a violation of freedom and pro-tyranny or whatever, maybe we should all give each other another chance uh, so that we can strengthen our community because us being splintered. Now, I'm, I'm a firm believer in unity, but the unity has to be based on the truth, it has to be based on morality, and it has to be based on what's right. Because an injustice that happens to one man anywhere happens to all men everywhere. When Sean got arrested at the 75th precinct with a freaking law in his hand, and they violated that law to throw him into a cage, that didn't just happen to Sean Paul Reyes from Long Island Audit. That happened to every single one of us. And we should all start taking that kind of stuff personally. When NC Tyrant Hunter gets violated and they put the cuffs on him so tight, it cuts off his circulation or when San Joaquin Valley Transparency gets arrested and they put him in this cold cell for 24 hours and don't give him food for water. That's, uh, that's happening to all of us. So, you know, we all have personalities. We all have egos. Maybe we should just step back for a second and go, you know what? I'm willing to let bygones be bygones. Let's have a, a clean slate and let's build this community the way it should be built. What do you say about that? I, I agree. I agree. I think that, you know, less when I agree with you, because at the end of the day, you know, we're all trying to fight for the same thing. We're all trying to affect change. And, you know, we all have our different ways about going about it. And, you know, that's fine. I've never once condemned anybody for their behavior in, in any sort of audit situation or activism. Never once. 
you know, they are entitled. They, I would be a hypocrite if I ever judged anybody for their behavior. I, I can have my opinion that it's not effective. And, and, and I think that's what really uh, upsets some people is that when I say that, listen, I don't think that behavior or that or handling it that way is effective. You know, we all can't just be drones, right? Like you, you made, like you said about the, the, the cult, right? We, we don't want to be a cult here. We want, we, everybody's going to have their own opinion. And it, my opinion is that's not an effective way to, uh, to create any sort of change or to change the minds of the masses in our country. So I, I 100% agree with you. You know, we see the comment section all the time. It's always full of people saying, you know, I haven't read the chat this entire time, but I, I am sure there's people saying against me, there's people against you, you know, there's people against both of us, you know, there's people for other people that aren't even having this discussion with us right now. You know, it, it, it's just, and, and unfortunately that's life. Right. That's our society. That yeah, is, it's, gonna, a micro, yeah. it's, it's a microcosm of our the, the comment section is a microcosm of our society. And it truly mm -hmm. saddens me as well when I see those kinds of comments. And I'm like, you know, are we ever really going to, you know, affect change here? If we're too busy fighting each other, you know, how are we ever going to come together and fight the true tyrants and the true corrupt system? Like I said, you took me so many good points in your in your intro about, you know, the, the, the fiat currency and and um, the government and how it's, you know, they're bought and paid for and everything else. Like those are great points. And I think there's, those are points that everybody should get behind. But, you know, when people there's, and there's certain people, you know, and, and another thing is, is that, you know, there are certain things, just, just one, one little thing here is that there are certain people in, in the activism community, in our community that I don't, that I don't agree with, not because of how they handle themselves or, or what they say or their freedom of speech or how they exercise their rights. It's more about, you know, how I think that, you know, they might be, you know, trying to scam somebody and I can't get behind that no matter what, no matter if your goal is the same, if you're trying to take advantage of people, I can't get behind that whatsoever. And, you know, I, I, I've never wanted that to be a part of my platform or, you know, it's, it's never, I, I don't, you know, I've, I've recently partnered with attorney shield and I'm not trying to talk about that. Right. I'm not trying to sell anything, but I'm just saying like, I've done that after three years of not doing any sponsorships or doing anything of that. And I only did it. I only became part of this company because I, I really think it could help save people's lives. I really think that it could help deescalate situations and save people's lives. Is it going to change law? People are like, Oh, it's not going to change anything. Is it going to change law enforcement? Of course, it's not going to change law enforcement. Of course it's not. It, but it could help somebody get home at the end of the night. It could help change the mentality that, you know what they, yeah, most law enforcement officers now have body cameras, but as we know, Brian, they can manipulate that. They don't want to release it. When you have footage, what's the one thing that, you know, everybody in our community always says, always film the police in yep. any given circumstance, always film the police. I don't care if he's super nice to you or always film the police. But again, that's another problem that I think that, you know, this, this, uh, the app attorney shield could solve is that, you know, you can't turn off the phone without a pin, things of that nature. That, that is something that I truly believe in and that I can get behind to try and save people's lives. I, I'm not trying to, you know, do anything. I'm not trying to sell you something that's going to, that's not going to help you at all. I think it really would. And that's why I can get behind it. And I don't knock anybody for taking any spot. I want to make it clear. I don't, I'm sure there's a lot of people that take sponsorships and do things of that nature. I don't knock anybody for doing that. I'm glad you, but, I'm glad yeah. you clarified that. Cause it kind of sounded like you were. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just want to know. I wanted to be clear. I'm just saying that yeah. I, I just think that I haven't taken one in three years, not one in three years. And with a channel of my size, I've could have taken it, you know, I could take a sponsorship selling you flashlights and doing all yeah, these yeah. different things and, and, and whatever else people have offered me to do and get $5,000 a video. And, you know, I just wanted to make it clear that I didn't do that because I wanted it to be genuine and come and, and serve some utility to some, to, to, for what I'm fighting for. Yeah. Not that but it's no, not genuine. No, not, if some, not that it's not no. genuine, if somebody doesn't, it does take a sponsorship, but no, but let, no, 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 not at let, all. Not at all. Let me, let me just say, cause I've heard people knock attorney shield and, you know, I've heard people knock other people who do sponsorships. I don't think that's what we should be arguing about. And to claim that another YouTuber or auditor is scamming people, man, that, that is such a subjective judgment that I think if we stay out of that arena and just talk about things that are more concrete, I, I do, Sean, I want to, I don't have, I mean, our, our country and the police forces and the sheriff's department and the pol political injustice system is so freaking corrupt. It seems like an insurmountable 
um, obstacle to come up with a solution. I think we can. I think it's going to take way more numbers than we have. They only did. They only. They only successfully pulled off the American Revolution with a third of the population of the colonists. Right. Not but a lot of people know that. Right. Yeah, but um, I do. There's something that I had a question of, and it, I, th this this uh, live stream kind of confused me a little bit more than I was at the beginning of the live stream. But remember, remember when Leroy Truth had the live stream, and we were we were kind of talking back and forth in the the chat room, and you said in regard to Captain George um, Rapazzo, he said uh, you said about him, he's enforcing. I'm I'm going to quote you, okay. He, you said he's enforcing the law that was passed by elected officials. If you don't like the law, you don't hate the police officer. You take it up with the legislature and you hold them accountable. Can you expand on that a little bit? So the point I was trying to make there was, is that we got to look for solutions. Like where we talk about, and that was in the context of you calling him a Gestapo, right? So when, yeah, when, by, by me saying that, what it was me trying to say, let's do some, let's okay. Right. Cops are pigs, a cab. Gestapo, all that. Great. Fantastic. Let's, and you see it in the comment section. That's what really frustrated me in the moment as they're like, a cab, you know, yeah, all cops are Gestapo. And it's just like, you know, why don't we just try something a little bit different, right? Why don't we try to hold the people that make these unconstitutional, tyrannical laws accountable? Because I see, it seems to me that they just slip through and nobody really, I'm not saying you don't, Brian clarifying i'm not saying that you don't i'm just saying that in general the hatred is towards law enforcement and i get it i get it 100 and if they didn't enforce the laws you know what would happen i get that whole argument if they didn't enforce these unconstitutional laws but i'm just saying that let's try how many people it, it saddens me that you know this whole thing is you know every everybody's bought and paid for i get it but why don't more people that can't be bought and paid for try and, and do it right if, if somebody why don't we need people to get involved in it's just a solution right it's my my attempt at a, any sort of solution to this you know tyrannical problem in our country is to have patriots get up there and and try and change the country and try and people who really love freedom people who really want to do right by the people and you know i get it people are like oh your vote doesn't matter your vote doesn't count but again what does that solve right your vote doesn't count first of all no one votes anyway right? The, the statistics on people voting is abysmal. Nobody votes, you know, barely people vote in the, the presidential election. That's the most people, people vote, but nobody really even votes in their, you know, there'll be a, you know, a, a county of millions of people and, you know, 10,000 people will vote you know, or 20,000 people will vote. And I get you like, Oh, you know, our votes don't count. So what now? What, what do you, what now? Like, I don't well, want to become a, I don't want to become a, I don't want to become a community of just complaining without yeah any sort of real solutions or real i'm all about exposing tyrants i've done it for three years now um, well i i have the for, answer for I, I, have, I have the Go answer ahead. to that i have the answer to that um okay so and the, what confused me about your statement about you know hey he he was just enforcing a law that was passed by the elected officials and then you said um if you don't like the law, you don't hate the police officer, you take it up with the legislator. But but how is taking up with the legislature a solution when you had the law in your hand at the 75th precinct and the cops did not care? You actually had you had if I'm not mistaken, you had the New York State and New York City law saying that you could record in that lobby of the 75th precinct. Am I right about that? You are right. Yep. 100%. Yeah. So so those two laws from the New York City and New York I have an State. For you. Okay, wait, just my point is the New York City, New York state law corresponded with the right to freedom of press from the First Amendment. So all those three laws of the land uh, aligned and yet the enforcers who should have been protecting your rights actually took 100 percent of the, your freedom. So if the answer is to go to the legislator to change the laws and the correct three correct laws, which which amen themselves at the same time, were just trashed by the law enforcers. How is going to the legislature to change the laws the solution to the problem? Yeah, good example. Great point. In that specific scenario, I did have the laws in my hand. I did go to the 7th precinct, 75th precinct, and I knew based on the tyrannical and corrupt past of the NYPD, they have the largest gang in the country. Um, they, I knew that they were going to arrest me. I knew I was going to have to spend, you know, 12 hours. I didn't think it was going to be 12. I thought I'd get a desk appearance ticket, but they wrote, they wrote to those tyrant officers, wrote order. They asked the court for order of protections against me. 
the tyrants who arrested me and threw me into a cage asked for orders of protection against me so that way I wouldn't be eligible for a desk appearance ticket and I'd have to go and sit in, you know, central booking even longer. So then the legislator in New York City and New York State passed a law that said you have to enshrine the First Amendment right to film police officers. I tried to show them the law. I exposed them for their tyrannical behavior to hundreds of thousands of people. Then I now I could just be in a comment section and say, well, you know, I could just oh, I could just make a video and say, well, look at them. This is this is my whole point, point Brian. I could say those tyrants those pigs, they took my freedom, this and that. The legislator passed a law, and they won't even listen to the law, and they're tyrants, 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 having a good night, everybody, take it easy, right? I could have just done that, right? Got, you know, did the video, exposed the tyrants for what they were, but I took it to the next level, right? I took, I, 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 I'm trying a different solution, which is why now tomorrow I will be in the Second Circuit Court of Appeals fighting to get the judge to they've actually taken down the signs and when the injunction was granted that's changed right brian so like when when i went to the with the first dis, the, the when i went to the district court in federal court they were able to tell the nypd to take down their signs unfortunately they appealed because that's how tyrannical the, the city of new york the, the nypd is they very you know they, they want to protect this policy of theirs to their last die, dying breath so the judge said take down all the signs immediately they started taking down the signs some activists went in there and 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 uh and filmed but then they appealed and the injunction was stayed and now i'm in the second circuit doing oral arguments so i say that because there there's a process other than again there's everybody has their own solutions right i'm just doing what i can do in order to try and affect change and to control the tyrannical police department so yes the legislator you're right now there's the judiciary, right? Now you take it up to the judicial courts. And now, we're, and again, I just think it's so unproductive because I know there's going to be people in the comment section saying, well, they, the courts are bought and paid for. They're okay, but, you know, I'm trying here. I'm, tr I'm trying. I'm literally doing the best I can do with what I got in order to change some sort of policies. I've had the mayor in Berwyn, Illinois, you know, rip down the sign that he had, the unconstitutional sign that he had. I think that filming government employees and public servants and, and law enforcement is one of the most important things that anyone can do when they're interacting with their government. It's to promote transparency and to hold them accountable. And, and, and that's what I'm really fighting for. And like I said, you know, yes, in that specific state, in that specific incident, they went against the legislator. But that's why I'm like, you know what? Why don't we get all legislators to pass, again, an idea? And people can criticize me for my ideas and solutions. That's fine. You're entitled to that. But, you know, I think it's, I, I don't think it's very um, effective to, for our general movement to say, well, you know, why are you going through all this process for? They're all corrupt. And it's like, that's such a defeatist attitude that you're like, you know, that's all corrupt. You know, I've made changes in certain uh, municipalities. I changed you know, the NYPD for a couple days until they appealed it and hopefully we'll change them permanently in court. And that's my whole point, Brian, is that let's stop complaining and just calling, you know, law enforcement, Gestapo and tyrants and all these other things and just repeating that over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And start I, doing and, something about it. And I wasn't even, I wasn't even trying to hold, I'm not even actually trying to hold your feet to the fire. I truly am trying to understand, uh, you know, how things could change if, if, if when you had the right law that amen, the constitution was just the supreme law of the land and they ignored it, the, the, the message they conveyed is so in our faces. And I think the answer is more simple and less complex than we all think. You know, one of my favorite quotes from the, one of the founding fathers is it's not the uh, majority who will prevail, but the irate and tireless minority who are keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men, realizing that law enforcement is, you know, all these, you know, we call them costume clowns. We call them pigs. We call them tyrants. We call them Gestapo or whatever they're, I mean, at the end of the day, they're human beings with families just like us, like you, like you noted at the at the top of this discussion. So I, I would appeal, appeal to the Captain George Raposos who might be watching this right now or any law enforcement or ex-law enforcement agent. Hey, I'm a fellow human being with you. I want freedom for my family just like you want freedom for yours. But you got to realize, and I'm talking to the law enforcers right here, when you take away my freedom, you're literally jeopardizing your own children's freedom and your freedom. When a Sean Paul Reyes or a David from San Joaquin Valley Transparency or a Chile De Castro from Delete Laws, I really think that we're all trying to fight for freedom. But what people have to realize is at the end of the day, we're all human beings. And if I could appeal to the, the to the humanity of anybody who's wearing 
uh, uniform and calling themselves a police department officer or a sheriff or a deputy, um, you got to understand if you don't fight for your freedoms today, and I'm talking about the reposos of the world, then you're going to lose them tomorrow. You will. Now you may load us up to the box cars, but the next day you're next and you're expendable. The only way we can make ourselves priceless and valuable in the eyes of everybody individually is if each, each, each and every one of us bellies up to the bar and realizes how important individual rights are. If you don't have freedom, you don't have life. And if you don't have life, you ain't got nothing. So the reason I asked you this is because if those cops at the 75th precinct violated a law that was actually right and they could have upheld it, then they can also disregard unjust laws. So I don't think the answer is going to our legislators and the politicians so much as it is to go to the law enforcers, appeal to their humanity. Now, now, my, now this might fall on its face and not work, but I would sure like it if they could exercise that officer discretion and maybe come to our aid when I, the IRS or whoever comes knocking at our door. You know what I mean? I, 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 I 100% agree, but you know, 100% agree with everything you just said. I would just say that, you know, we have to, we live in we have to accept the reality, right? So if Captain Raposo or anybody else, you know, does it's not this is not really not not even about him. This is in general, right? All law enforcement. If if any one of those that you just appeal to, which I agree, and I and I I, I appeal to to all of them as well to to do that, use the discretion not to violate our rights and to uphold the the oath to the United States Constitution. Like I said, I do it every day. I try and do this every day. Try and change the minds of people. Try and change yeah. the minds of law enforcement. You know, we both work very hard at what we're doing. A lot of activists do. You know, I I would just say that in reality, the reason why I brought up brought up the the economic thing of it is not to excuse it. And, I, and this comment was not to excuse anything. That's why I didn't say like he's absolved from it in any way like that's yeah, how i that's how it, i took it, it by it, the way yeah 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 it, it's it's not you know it, it, it's it's not that i'm absolving anybody of anything it's it's that i'm i'm trying to live in the, the world that we live in i'm trying to it, realistically what would happen if i went into the precinct and those officers said well he has the law in his hands you know we're not going to arrest him it's such a sad thing that they can you know do a million egregious things that we see every single day on on your channel on my channel on other channels that they could do such egregious things and get away with it right well what do we talk about all the time we've investigated ourselves and found no wrong doing but the reality is brian is that if they wouldn't have enforced the nypd's policy in that situation they would have been fired that's the reality that's the reality so we can either talk about you know all law enforcement are just going to go against all law enforcement that is retire and i mean that everybody's going to get fired and and that's why it's got to be changing the minds of everyone it's cha it's changing the minds and, and and awakening awakening the minds of everybody in our country as much people as we can in our country to the truth and and to 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 fight for our freedoms because we all know what's going to happen if one officer goes against the thin blue line gang they're going to be ostracized. That's what I'm saying. Another route, I mentioned it in this comment section in, in the same thing when I was talking to you, unions, right? Not too many people talk about police unions. You know, that is a huge thing. That is something that legislators can put a law that says, you know, no more police unions, right? Or, or, or curtail the power of the police unions. Police chiefs, people don't understand. Police chiefs have very limited power when it comes to, when, when there's a union involved right they they curtail to the union they they bow to the unions especially here on the in, in i know not so much in texas um but in in, in that area but in the northeast this it, it's like the mob the union is like the mob it's it's you know they're elected the politics is very prevalent here and you know it's very i know it's prevalent everywhere but in in the northeast here and in the chicago area unions are a big deal and they have immense power to protect these tyrants and then also they won't protect the people who stand up for our rights. So again, what happens when that law enforcement officer loses his job? Okay, he did the right thing, he lost his job, he's no longer a law enforcement officer anymore, and now another tyrant that got picked on in high school replaces him, a complete and utter tyrant. Like we said, there's levels to tyranny, right? So yeah, he might be willing to arrest you for you know filming inside of a precinct, and the guy replacing him might break your arm and break your jaw what they did to the poor poor woman which is why i started uh, my activism inside the nypd that they they broke her arm a 65 year old grandmother broke her arm for filming her encounter with police departments the the nypd in the lobby 
right? So that you know, there it's it's hard for me to say that you know, oh, let's the the, the they want to do. We have to live in reality. That's all I'm saying. We have to live in reality that they're going to, if one person, we need to change the minds of everyone because one person in a police department or even two, three law enforcement in the police department, I've seen what happens firsthand when a police officer supports me. He, they'll, they'll tell me, hey, listen, I supported you. I said, what's up to you on your, on your video? And now all the officers hate me. They ostracize me, you know. Yeah, but doesn't that, that, doesn't that testify to you to the grave evil and corruption that's going on with police departments it's almost like right. like they won't come they won't they won't come to the knowledge of the truth because their paycheck depends on them not coming to the knowledge of the truth and their life is going to be way easier if they just continue on the tyranny train well no it's not about that it's about change and it's not about it's not it's about changing all minds not just law enforcement it, because it, no no it, i'm just it I'm, I'm number yeah you know, powers when we when we when, when we the people come together and we we can come together and say listen you know at the end of the day we're the cash cows for the government right yeah, you know of course. Yeah. you know biden can make a, a an egregious statement like what do you need your guns for we got f16s right such an egregious statement mm -hmm. uh, such a tyrannical statement made by that man and he could say that it's it's so disingenuous though and it's not it's not reality because he's saying that to try and to, to to psych you out because yes we do have the power they just don't want you to know that we have the power they want you to think that they have f-16s but they're not going to drop atomic bombs and, and hit us with f-16s why because then who's going to fund them who is going to give them all the money that they have no one let, let me let me backfill something I just said about cops because I, I I kick myself almost every day for walking around with Pollyanna glasses and thinking the best of everybody and hoping that I can be appeal to the humanity of people who wear uh, badges and guns and and think they can violate our rights and they can go to bed and sleep well at night. But I mean, if we learned one thing from Texas, it was Uvalde and 376 cops from five different law enforcement agencies showed up and not one of them did the right thing. As a matter of fact, they did the exact wrong thing and they kept parents from going in to save their kids. So when, when I hear people say, you know, well, there are some good cops, you know, granted cops do some good things, but for the most part, they will leave that good thing that they just did, you know, whether saving, I, I'm getting a lot of reverb, like somebody's moving their microphone around or something. Um, but, you know, they'll, they'll save a kid from a frozen lake bed one day or get a cat out of a tree or help an old lady across the street. And then they're going to, then they take you down and shake you down through civil asset forfeiture. So I, agree. I, 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 I I, I want a better world and I want to come up with solutions that are effective in achieving that goal. And I think you want the same thing. And I hope everybody watching is wanting the same right. thing too. And I hope so as well. I think that, you know, people, that, that's why I think we need to come together and, you know, and, and realize that we have the, we have to be effective in our tactics as well as, you know, you know, emotional, we can be emotional and, you know, and a lot of people are, but we have to be effective as well. And, I don't think that, you know, you said that, you know, I, Uvalde, a total disaster. And, and it's in that is, and I'm glad I get to speak about this. The same person who investigated that department and found them of no wrongdoing, an independent quote unquote, independent investigator. He's the same exact independent investigator who investigated a corrupt police chief that whistleblowers came on my channel to, um, a whistleblower law enforcement officer came on my channel, was throwing Adderall parties, tasing his officers doing all types of corrupt and ty 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 tyrannical things. He's the same. So this guy, now that I know this, I'm going to be heading back to Texas. This is, th this is their guy that they hire in order to come to the conclusion that they want them to come to, to protect the peep, to protect the law enforcement officers. You've all this disgusting when you see them holding back parents from trying to mm -hmm. save their children, absolutely mm -hmm. disgusting behavior. And it needs to be called out. It needs to be highlighted. And that's why channels like yours and mine and Dan's, all of our channels are so important because it calls it, it it's opening the eyes to people all across this country wake up law enforcement doesn't care about you the system again the system we could talk about individuals all day long but the system itself is broken from law enforcement to our government all of it is broken and designed from our schools you know a lot of people don't talk about schools right you what did you learn in school that you that that really helped you out to succeed in life absolutely nothing it's designed that way school, uh, there, our public school system is designed in order to make you a worker that's how it was originally designed to make you clock in at nine o'clock leave at five o'clock 
it's all designed that way in order to make you a worker. It doesn't teach you about credit. They don't teach you about stocks and, and, and investing money and, and for your future or any of that or business loans that we're so quick. This country is so quick to give out billions and billions, if not trillions of dollars in student loan debt to irresponsible teenagers, but they won't give a teenager a business loan to go start his own small business. There's mm -hmm. a lot of different facets to this broken system that we live in. And my whole point is that we need to come together and change the minds and wake people up to the system is corrupt. Yes, law enforcement is corrupt, but the system enables them to be corrupt. All right, guys, I'm going to jump in here real quick. I got somebody in the basement who um, I want to add to the conversation yeah, no, I, real I, quick. Like I told you, Dan, just really quick, Dan, I, I told you I, I couldn't stay that long. I got a million things going on at the house. That's why I'm not no, even I got it. Right you now. guys have been out for an hour and 25, so I want to interrupt no, a little I bit. I just wanted to say really quickly to, to Brian, Brian, you know, never anything personal. I never thought that anything you ever, any videos you ever covered of mine was anything personal. I, I truly believe that you are sincere in all of your beliefs. I just think that there's sometimes, you know, people feed wrong information, you know, old information as it was in the past and things of that nature in order to divide us because of their own personal egos and vendettas and things of that nature. And I'm not perfect. I have an ego. We all have egos, but this conversation with you you know, really helped open my eyes to, you know, how sincere you are. I've always thought you were very sincere in what you, what you talk about and you truly believe in everything that you say. And, um, I just want you to know, there's no bad feelings between us whatsoever never was. And I appreciate everything that you do for this community, for, for we, the people, for the people out there. I really do appreciate it, man. Yeah. Let's change the world. Let's use our platforms to make this world a better place. That's all Amen. I want.